Hello, I'm here to give a little bit of a guide for those who are confused on how you should play through the Swarm Disaster since it can be daunting for some when developers have added so many mechanics and you need to do a little bit of reading. I'm going to talk through about the new features step by step. As for combat, I'm just going to talk about some of the team comms and build tips that might be useful for you when dealing with the final boss in the Swarm Disaster. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm not here to provide the best build on how to quickly get all the rewards in this new mode. So you can check other YouTubers instead if you're looking for those. I like to play the game by experimenting myself and discovering some fun way to tackle these challenges. And highly encourage you to do so as well. Alright first, what are you trying to achieve? Quite obvious right? You want more jades for more gacha. From what I've known, you will get up to around 4500 jades for 100%ing everything in the Swarm Disasters. And you can get quite a bit of it by playing through and completing the Swarm Disaster main objectives. Essentially, you want to progress through your Swarm Disaster story and try to get all of your rewards along the way. That could be achieved by completing the objectives of the, the Trial Path Strider, which in turn will award you Communing Trail Points. These Communing Trail Points not only will make you progress with your Swarm Disaster objective, but also provide you with various buffs that will really help you in progressing through the Swarm Disasters in the higher difficulty. And meanwhile, the objectives are varied from getting some cosmic fragments, going through some domains, get certain amount of blessings, and many more. Since each objective has a prerequisite, so you need to finish the previous objectives before moving to the next one. Basically, your overall progress is not counted throughout all of your playthrough Swarm Disaster. It is better for you to focus on clearing these objectives first. Also, it is highly recommended for you to clear lower level difficulty first and finish the objectives since unlocking all of these buffs will make your progress on higher difficulty to be so much better, as I mentioned previously. This is very different from um, the normal simulated universe since it is not a weekly task that you need to do and mostly a one-time thing. Additionally, at the beginning, you only have few paths to select from, so make sure you complete the objectives needed to unlock all of them so you can test out multiple builds for your Swarm Disaster playthrough. Number 2. How to navigate through the plane Basically, it is quite similar to the weekly simulated universe. You're going to choose your own route to reach the end of each level, or they call it here, the plane. Instead of going through each floor, you can choose as many domains as you want to tackle as possible before you actually reaching the end boss of that plane. And so far, all difficulty has up to 3 planes. You should decide for yourself whether you want to focus more on combat or you would like to focus more on getting occurrences in order to make the team stronger through Blessing and Curios. Both of them have their own pros and cons, that's for sure. Also, you should decide if you want to go slowly and collect as many Blessings and Curios as possible or you want to blaze through them without relying much on blessing and curios. But beware, there's a time system being implemented that will make the enemy stronger the longer you spend your time exploring for your whole run. So you should decide for yourself when to stop exploring and go for the final boss fight. I haven't fully tested how much stronger the boss will be if you spend the longest possible time for your run. But even with just one level buff on the enemy, they're able to kill my characters that are almost fully developed on difficulty 3. So please, please beware when you're playing the higher difficulty. Speaking of domains, there are a couple of domains available for the Swarm Disaster mode. I'm going to explain all of them one by one. Number 1. Blank Domain There's only a box that can be destroyed here to get a few fragments. So I really don't recommend going through this domain, but you do get an achievement if you go there once in your lifetime, unless you play the Path of Nihility. Number 2. Combat Domain It is the standard simulated universe combat domain with one or more enemies. If you only get one enemy to fight, the value of this domain is not that high, but if you're able to get a modifier beacon to active in this domain, it is quite a decent choice to proceed through this domain. Number 3. Elite. Elite enemies are pretty good since you're able to get higher rarity blessing. Especially when there's even a modifier active, you might end up getting higher rarity blessings or more than one blessings through this domain. And number four, boss domain. The end of the plain boss, they can act like a normal simulated universe boss with three phases but lower HP. Usually on the plain one is just a standard elite enemies, 
while on the plane too tends to be the symbol of the universe boss, like Jeopard, Svarok, Kokolia, Kafka, and the others. Beware, they can destroy you if you're not prepared, despite their lower HP and lower break bars. What's good about this boss plane is that you may choose the boss that you want to fight, as they will provide different benefits for you when you're fighting the final boss for this run. Whichever benefits that suits you, so choose it based on your team composition and all the blessings that you currently have. Number 5. The Occurrence Domain This is very similar to the standard Simulated Universe. It can be something positive, something negative, or just nothing entirely. But they have added more events for the Occurrence Domain. Definitely worth checking out for some more interesting rewards. Number 6. Rewards Domain This is a really good domain overall. It is similar to occurrences, but this mostly will only give you the good stuff, like getting many blessings, enhancing many blessings, obtaining curios, and many more. However, sometimes you might end up have to fight an elite enemies if you end up getting not the best types of event. Overall, if there's a reward domain, I will try to aim to reach it. Number 7. Adventure Domain So far from what I have encountered, there is to destroy as many boxes or hit as many charters within the time limit. You will get a cosmic fragment by default, but if you manage to reach the first target, you will get a blessing, and if you manage to reach the second target, you get a curio. Also, this domain is really good since there's a character download panel here, if you need more characters to help you in exploring through the planes. A bit of tips here, if you don't have the best possible device for this, try to always reach the states of 60 FPS, while you're tackling this domain. It will save you a bit of time in reaching those targets. Also control characters that has a really short animations and possibly range. One of the best options would be Imbibitor Lune, Welt, maybe Yukon, and Asta. I haven't tried all the characters, but I believe this is the best characters to use during the adventure domain. And then number eight, there is Pipe. Similar to the standard similar to the universe, this is where you can download a character, access Heritage Shop, and Reviver. And then there's another new domain for number 9, Transaction Domain. This domain is really good when you have a lot of fragments and looking to get a path resonance quickly. There will be Herda selling Curio and Screwloom selling Blessings here. The Curio tends to be more expensive, but Curios that are sometimes hard to get via RNG can be found here, like the one that cut the enemy health by 30% at the start of the fight. As for the Blessings, they will tend to sell the Blessings of the path that you have chosen initially along with two other paths that have synergy with your initial path. So far, I haven't seen any Path of Propagation Blessings being sold here, but maybe once you unlock the path for your initial choice, maybe they will sell it. I will update that in the comment section once I'm able to confirm it. And then number 10, Combat Swarm Domain. This is very similar to a normal combat domain, but instead you are fighting swarm enemies and a guaranteed uh, Propagation Blessing, usually one or two star. And number 11, the Occurrence Swarm Domain. Just like a normal occurrence with random events, here instead we're getting events related to the swarm. It has some tough battles, but they will give us some very good rewards. If you're confident to tackle all the swarm enemies, go for it. And lastly, the final domain is the Boss Swarm Domain. This is the final boss of your run. You will fight a boss with three phases, and they're able to summon multiple enemies each time it takes a turn. And on the last phase, it will make a copy of itself. And also, depending on how long you have been exploring the simultaneous universe, they will grow stronger. I will discuss some team composition and recommendations at the end of the video. To wrap up the domain discussion, let me talk a little bit about the domain modifier called Beacon, which are the following. Beacon number one, Enhance. The enemy will grow quite stronger, but you'll get a bonus reward in terms of choosing blessings that are already enhanced. If you're confident, don't shy away from it. Number 2. Mutation Beacon The usual enemy will be swapped with the bug enemies. The strength of this enemy usually is very close to plane 1 boss, so be careful if you're not ready. And number 3, Throtter Blessing Beacon. The domain that has this beacon will guarantee to have a Throtter that will give you blessings once you manage to defeat them. And number 4, Throtter Curio Beacon. The domain will guarantee to have a Throtter that will give you a Curio once you manage to defeat them. Usually they're quite difficult to find on a plane, maybe 1 or 3 at most. But if you have Path of the Hunt as your initial choice, 
you might end up getting more. There are some objectives that involves the Trotter Beacon, so you might want to consider the, the Han Blessing for this. Before I wrap up this section, how you want to traverse will also be affected by the initial path that you have chosen, since each of the paths will provide buffs and different effects on how you get around the domain. For example, Path of Destruction will allow you to get rewards from domains without actually going through them, and provide the damage buffs, which can really be helpful during your combat. While Path of the Hunt will allow you to pass through domains that is not necessarily adjacent to each other, and providing speed buffs. And other paths will give different kinds of effects, so do experiment with them and see which one do you like that synergize the most with your build and your playstyle. That wraps up this section. And let's talk about something that many people might want to hear, how to deal with the final boss. Once again, just like in my quick disclaimer, let me say it again. I'm not here to say which is the best way to deal with the boss. As many YouTubers out there, I'm pretty sure they already provide the quote-unquote best build or cheese strats to easily clear the swarm disaster. If that's what you want to find, you can find those in other YouTuber channel instead. But I digress. From me, just discover your favorite way to tackle the challenge. But the general tips that I want to give you, since you will be dealing with a lot of enemies due to the boss nature of keep spawning more enemies, it was better for you to have strong AoE teams and build that focuses on big damage, like the Elation and the Han Blessing combos. Or you can focus on locking down the enemies through imprisonment teams or freezing teams, which from what I've seen, many people in YouTube have recommended to go through with this build. So basically, going all out with the Blessing of Remembrance. But if you're very confident with your damage output, then feel free to go a bit more bold with your single target character's DPS focus by killing the boss as soon as possible. Maybe the hunt and propagation combo. Or maybe dishing out a lot of DOT damage by using your beloved Kafka and the DOT team that utilizes the path of Nihility while building some survivability for yourself. Moving on to the next sections, things to consider. Let me say a few things to consider isn't crucial. It is something that you might want to think about when you're playing through the Swarm Disaster. Number one, they have added a special resonance at which two additional paths will have synergies with the initial path that you have chosen. You can get an extra resonance for each path once you have three blessings of them. For example, the destruction path has resonance with the path of elation and path of preservations. Once you have at least three blessings of destructions and then have three blessings of elations, you will get a destructions elations resonance. Same thing applies once you have three blessings of destructions and preservations and you will unlock Destruction Preservation Resonance. Keep in mind that you can also unlock both of these extra resonance once you have at least three blessings of Destruction, Elation, and Preservations. Each of them provide interesting buffs, but it is up to you to decide whether it is worth investing on these few blessings or not. So every time you try a new path, always try to look up all of this resonance synergy first. Number two, it will take quite a bit of time to get all of the rewards in this mode, and each run will take a little bit of time to complete. Since that is being done like that by design, do not to finish this mode too fast. I really don't recommend you to completely grind and bashing your head on this mode within a few sitting sessions. This would only make you frustrated and burn out from this mode, and end up hating them. While in reality, this mod is actually very fantastic when you break it down one by one. I really recommend you to probably finish up one run per day if you're busy, and two runs at most, since some of them can take from half an hour to an hour. Unless you really love the mode like me, then go ahead and try to get it done as many times as possible. For the time limit, don't be too discouraged in exploring, especially on the lower difficulty. And number four, at higher difficulty, you might want to have extra characters that can help you to take down certain enemies. Since having characters that can break the enemies really makes some difference. So trying to get the character downloader panel in the adventure domain as soon as possible might not be a bad idea. <laughs> Well, I've talked for a long time now, so um, let me give you a summary of the important points of this video. Your main objective is to gain communing trail points. 
so you might want to repeat some of the lower difficulty in order to gain them and unlock some buffs that will be useful in challenging the higher difficulty, especially difficulty 4 and above. Since there's no apparent rewards from different difficulties except the first time clear rewards. At first few runs, you might also want to unlock all of the paths first since having more options will allow you to try many different playstyle that really suits you. When going through the domains, you might want to consider going through domains that will give you the most benefits while taking into account your time, the blessings and curios that you currently have, and how much stronger you are willing to let the enemies grow. When fighting the final boss, consider bringing teams that are able to perform lockdown to prevent enemies from taking their turn, or really high damage that can kill the enemies as fast as possible. Well, that's it for my small guide video. Next video, we'll be discussing some tips about swarm disasters after I spend some more time delving and studying the mechanics of the swarm disaster. Not only that, I'm planning to dissect all of the paths in greater details and analyze how good they are individually when you're going through the swarm disaster mode. And probably also rate all of the blessings and also all of the curios and also the domains and events. So subscribe to my channel to get notified for that. And not for too long, I will also be working on discussion video discussing whether the Swarm Disaster is a good mode for Honkai Star Rail overall gameplay and replayability. So stay tuned for that as well. Alright, that's it for me. Until the next video, stay sharp gamers. Yeah.